There's no other job I want in football, and uh, you, you, in the world. I don't just mean in Great Britain. I've had a lot of offers since I finished playing. As you can imagine, uh, people trying to suss you out, whether you're interested or not. This is the only job I would ever contemplate taking, and, you know, I've proved that day by taking it. I say again, I've got a lot of time for us. Uh, and I think it'll be and, um, a very sad day in one sense. But in another sense, basically, we hope the changes that we're making with Kevin coming in will give us the results on the field, which uh, eluded... Uh, the team in Aussie recently and we can go forward and survive in the second division because survive we must so the club can put its business plan together and go on to future greatness. February 1992 the arrival of the Messiah season 91-92 was all about survival now Keegan and Hall plotted a promotion party Venison, Beresford and Bracewell were signed in the summer all faced South End on opening day. Well obviously somebody of his calibre and obviously you know the club itself um, you know, wants to talk to you um, and like I said, uh, we had a meeting and it was, everything was sorted out within a couple of hours. And, you know, um, you know, he said in the press conference, you know, I'm one of many. Um, so it hopefully will be exciting times and obviously the main aim is to get in the Premier League. Since coming here, you know, you've heard all the talk and the excitement's building. The uh, excitement you can feel from the public you're just meeting is just unbelievable. So really, I'm looking forward to it. Every Newcastle fan's got the right to be optimistic and I don't want to be any other way. Newcastle pressing Cornwall back across his own box, falls edge of the area to Bracewell! Oh! Poor Bracewell, what a goal! Bracewell on his league debut. The Peacock, edge of the area, turns away from not one man but two. Support from Lee Clark. Neat ball into Clark, slips the keeper, does he off the line and in! It's in, it took a slight deflection. Clark and Akers of space! This time, Clark does score. No dispute about this one, bound by Steve Watson. Lee Clark goes to the adoring Gallagher fans, and after being pegged back, they've stretched their lead again. Lee Clark, a little toe poke from six yards. United 3-2 winners, 28,545, the biggest crowd anywhere in the country. The bookies who'd offered 12-1 to suddenly went 10s and 8s. Big spending derby remained 7-2 to favourites, and after a midweek 2-1 win against Mansfield in the Coca-Cola Cup, it was Arthur Cox and Derby who were next up. Car chips far post looking to find Peacock. Peacock, it's there, is it? And indeed, it's turned in at the far post by Gavin Peacock. And Steve Sutton looks daggers at Jason Kavanagh. Clark has got support from Venison. Finds the former Sunderland player. Square to Howie. Howie's control not good first time. But a better ball second time to Clark. Who slips one challenge. Looks to play the one-two, does he? Goes all alone. Oh! What a goal by Lee Clark. Victory at the baseball was followed by a rather difficult nil-nil at Mansfield in the second leg of the Coca-Cola. Despite missing a penalty, though, through they went to meet Middlesbrough. As another of the fancied sides, West Ham arrived at St James's. Ray Ransom continued to cover for John Beresford, the Hammers not only lost, they also had Julian Dix sent off. And after Gavin Peacock had put United ahead, up popped David Kelly for the first of 28 goals against his former club. Kelly drops the ball off to Peacock. Peacock, offside flag stays down. Clark, can he finish? He can't at the second attempt. Kelly! It's there, Newcastle, two in a minute. Lee Clark, the offside flag stays down. Watered by Mikrosko. Kelly scores against his former teammate. So far, a 100% record at St James's Park, a record which continued against Luton as the Magpies moved second. Liam O'Brien, edge of the area, might break to Lee Clark, saved by the keeper, Clark at the second attempt. Lee Clark's third goal of the season. Peacock confronted by Linton, the right fullback, then turns inside him. Delightful ball into Sheedy. Cross back across goal. Oh, what a goal by Newcastle United. Brilliant movement. Sheedy with a cross in, and David Kelly from no more than five yards. Side puts the ball past Andy Pedersen. Four straight wins then for Newcastle, but they stayed a point behind Charlton. They played a game more, as Saturday four took them to the delights of Twerton Park, and the boys' own heroics of Tommy Wright. A free kick on the edge of the area for a back pass. 11 men on the goal line. David Kelly over the ball. Back to Sheedy. Goal! It's all square. It's all square at uh, Twerton Park after 12 minutes. The goal scorer, Kevin Sheedy. David Kelly shimmies one way down the air. Cross comes in for Brian Head. A goal! It's, it's 2 1 to Newcastle United. Kevin Keegan and Terry McDermott up out of the dugout, punching the air. 
they played very, very well. We battled, and then, of course, Tommy Wright was the difference. He had it. It was just magnificent. I've never seen a, a goalkeeping performance like it in my life. Five straight wins then for Newcastle. Charlton, though, remain a point clear thanks to a 2-0 win at Sunderland. A week later, though, those placings were reversed. 20 weeks after beating Portsmouth on the escape route, Jim Smith's side made the same journey north. 29,000 plus turned out as the mighty Quinn returned to haunt Pompey. Great ball down the line by Sheedy to find Clark. Kelly wants it played short. He looks long. Mick Quinn's header. Oh, Mick Quinn, what a start. Mick Quinn against his former club. Brought back in. Classic movement. Sheedy down the line. Clark with the cross. Quinn with the header. Quinn plays Kelly. Kelly must score, surely. Kelly with a goal. A second for Newcastle. Brilliant work. Goal again. Quinn, Clark. Kelly just drifted wide of his marker and then finds the right-hand corner of the net past Alan Knight. Beresford to find Carr, Carr can square. Far post, Quinn must score! Quinn does score! Mick Quinn this time, no doubt about it. Carr's cross, Quinn buries it. Victory and United are top. Only for 24 hours in April would they relinquish that leadership. The following midweek saw a 2-2 draw at Grimsby in the Anglo-Italian. Quinn and Kelly the scorers. The following Saturday, though, saw another bumper crowd and an even more emphatic United win. Kevin Sheedy there, so too Liam O'Brien, Barry Venison, so too Beresford. It's O'Brien, oh, what a goal! Liam O'Brien with a spectacular free kick. He took one step and then belted the ball around and over the wall. Flicked header on by Peacock to find Kelly. Kelly goes down. The referee awards the penalty. Gavin Peacock against Keith Welch. It's goal! Gavin Peacock's fifth goal of the season. The keeper got a hand to it, pushed it into the back of the net. Slide rule accuracy by Gavin Peacock. Carr's little chip is there. That's Carr. The little chip cross comes shot. It clips the inside of the far post. Neat little movement. Peacock to Carr. And Carr just lifts the ball over the top of Keith Welsh. Kelly into Peacock. Peacock. Oh, it must be a penalty. It is a penalty. Martin Scott again, and the referee, Tom Fitzharris, who awarded one in the first half, has awarded one in the second. Peacock against Wells, it's there! Gavin Peacock, as nonchalant as you like, didn't even really run up to the ball, just stood over the ball and clipped it into the right-hand corner. The keeper went the right way again. This time, he didn't get a touch. They're singing, going up at St. James's. All the way on that far side. We'll pick out Kevin Brock, oh, the goal! Kevin Brock, come on as a stop. He took one look at it, and he's rifled it into the bottom left-hand corner. Newcastle, five. Bristol City, nil. United then going nap, and they were beginning to be noticed, even by the retiring England skipper. Most of the sides in the Premier League are struggling to attract big crowds. Newcastle having to lock people out, and that's... Uh, as far as I'm concerned, long may it continue, and hopefully they can be successful and get into the Premier League, which would be great for football, great for Newcastle, and great for Kevin King. By week six of the season, no fewer than four players had worn the black and white number seven. 36 hours before the cup meeting with Middlesbrough, though, Robert Lee was signed. £700,000 from Charlton, and money well spent for Keegan. Well, we're going well. That's the best time to get it. And uh, Robert Lee, I mean, we've we looked at him a lot, and uh, maybe we've looked last few weeks too far afield when the answer was actually here in England. Having rejected Middlesbrough, how ironic then that his Newcastle debut should be against Lenny Lawrence's side. Wearing the black and white number seven, it finished nil-nil, but the new boys still noticed the change in styles. Charlton seemed to um, uh, get in the corners first, then start to play football. Uh, Newcastle play football wherever they are, it's just total football and uh, Obviously, I obviously wasn't expecting that either, so it's, uh, it, was a, it was a great shock to me. In between the distractions of the Anglo-Italian Cup and the Coca-Cola Cup, the league campaign continued unabated. September the 26th took United and 8,000 travelling fans to Peterborough. A 1-0 win courtesy of Kevin Sheedy. Robert Lee again on the move, holds it up, gets the ball forward to Kevin Sheedy. Sheedy's clear out, he looks up, shoots, goal! Newcastle United on the hour are ahead by a goal to nil. I had a chance first half, the same situation, but um, it was on my right foot, which obviously means no goal. But I took it a bit wide in the first half, 
but um, I found myself in the same situation in the second half and um, I backed myself nine times out of ten to usually put those away, so it was nice to see it hit the back of the net. Still top and with eight straight wins in the league, the following Wednesday saw a 4-0 Anglo-Italian win against Leicester City using only four of those on duty at London Road. It meant progression to the international stage of the competition. Back in the league, though, there was a switch to Sunday, United's first live TV game, a 2-1 win secured by Peacock and Kelly at Brentford. With nine straight wins, they were now five points clear of Charlton and prepared for what turned out to be their first win at Ayrson Park since Boxing Day 1964. Well, we've played so the so-called top teams in our division, West Ham and Derby, and uh, we've stuffed both of them. You know, we played them at Middlesbrough two weeks, a week ago, whatever it was, and uh, up for a bit of luck, we'd have stuffed them as well. You know, so um, saying that we've never played anybody, you know, they're having a bit of purple patch in their, in the Premier at the moment. You know, but they've, they've not played anybody like us. As Kelly breaks, Kelly with only the keep of the feet! David Kelly! Oh, what a goal! Ball played the length of the field by Tommy Wright. Middlesbrough defenders sleeping. Kelly latches onto it, controls it in one, and as Ironside comes, he slips the ball under the Middlesbrough keeper. Jimmy Pollock gets the cross in. Ahead of David! The very first is Paul Wilkinson! Peacock finds... Quinn. Oh, Liam O'Brien! Liam O'Brien with a pile driver! Oh, my word, Liam O'Brien! How his seasons come to life! The ball turns square and he's drilled it in the bottom right hand corner. Howie turns the ball square to Venison on halfway to find Robert Lee. Slips the ball to Lee Clock. Offside back stays down. He's been forced wide. Squares! David Kelly! That's the goal that kills it! Newcastle United have got a third, they've killed it off. Keegan, McDermott, Clark, they all celebrate. Brilliant opening by Newcastle United. Clark has a fist of salute to the bench. He was unselfish, he was thoughtful, he squared it. Kelly scored from five yards. Newcastle will break their hoodoo at Ayrson Park. They lead by three goals to one. We know one thing, if we match teams' effort, we have got a lot of football inside, and uh, we really are playing Premier League stuff at the moment. Premier League Middlesbrough swept aside. The reward was a trip to another, Chelsea. Before all that, though, time to reward Lee Clark and Stephen Howey with long-term contracts. They've got to be classed with the big boys, and they've got to be paid accordingly. And we've got no qualms about giving these lads uh, three years at the club on very good contracts. If they're good enough, let's show... We're not, we're no, not going to discriminate against the local lad. Let, let's, let's go the other way and say, hey, come on, lads, we're paying six, seven hundred grand for players of their class. So let's give them a deal that's worthy of the way they play. I think it's right. Saturday, October the 10th, saw another first. 30,000 through the turnstiles for the first time as Tranmere came to Tyneside. Quinn came in for Sheedy, Kelly netted his fourth goal in three matches, and they made it 10 out of 10. Gwedo O'Brien might try the pile driver, tries the ball into the box to Quinn. Quinn back to O'Brien. O'Brien stays on his feet. It's there! David Kelly! 30,137 the crowd. Another 7,000, though, locked out. And United's 10 points clear. The crowd congestion was causing problems, though. The police stepped in, and all home games were designated all ticket. I must say, I'm not too happy because um I mean, why is that why are you not well happy? basically because of the fact of fact there are a lot of fans from the peripheral areas from the berwicks the annex the ushings the southern part of durham etc uh, who come across want to come in on a saturday and come straight to the ground and get a ticket and go in uh, it means in a sense that these people are asking them to come in twice and and, and and that's i don't think that's good for for the club or the fans but uh, the police have made this on safety grounds which you can't argue about we have to um, consider uh, their recommendations and, apl and, 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 and apply them. Funnily enough, the next game would have been all ticket anyway, the 115th Tyneweir League derby. A return to Roker Park for Barry Venison and Paul Bracewell, not to mention Keegan and Howie. Before the fixture lists are even produced, if, if Sunderland and Newcastle are in the same division, then the two hardest games are, are those games when you're drawn together. And it doesn't matter whether the beginning of the season, it doesn't matter whether at the end of the season, it doesn't matter whether one team's going well like we are and the other team's maybe not firing on all cylinders like Sunderland. They're, they're, there's just no set pattern. Sunderland's result on Sunday when they got uh, annihilated by West Ham, I think that will probably work against us because their pride will have been well and truly dented, so they want to come back and make a point. And I think it's a great game for Sunderland to come back and get a bit of pride. Barry Venison gets it forward, flicked on this time by Gavin Peacock to Robert Lee. The cross comes in and it's in the back of the net. We've had 12 minutes of the game gone. It's Sunderland 0, Newcastle United 1. 
hours with a free kick then. Shot this time by Anton Goal! Gondam Song has spurred the game for Sunderland after 24 minutes of the second half. The cross came in from Gary Owls and there's Gondam Song to fight the ball behind Tommy Wright. Venison, O'Brien, Brox there, so too Lee Clark, so too David Kelly. O'Brien tries to bend down! Oh! Liam O'Brien, what a goal! Over the top of the wall and into the right-hand corner as Tim Carter looks. O'Brien has produced another gem at Roker. And just when we thought it might be destined for a draw, up pops the Republic of Ireland International. 76 minutes played. The Irish magic of Liam O'Brien. Sunderland 1, Newcastle 2. For me especially, uh, coming from Sunderland, it, um, I, I needed to prove something coming here. Uh, there was a lot of my friends from school and, and other people that my family know here watching, so it um, was well pleased to get the result. Stephen Howey and Tyneside well pleased. 11 straight wins equaled the start of the great Spurs side of the 1960s. The Magpies now 10 points clear of West Ham who moved second. Win number 12 looked straight forward. It looked a formality. Sadly, it wasn't to be. Into the final minute, Mendonca just puts his foot on the ball. They'll see it as a moral victory, certainly, to Gilbert. Square again to Dobbin, tries to shut, it's there! Jim Dobbin gets the goal that has been threatened all afternoon. The ball turned square by Gilbert into the path of the Grimsby Town skipper. It was a terrific strike into the top left-hand corner. Tommy Wright got as close to it as he possibly could, but in the final minute of the game, those colours, as I was speaking, have been lowered. They've been lowered by Grimsby Town. Surely no way back for Newcastle United. The disappointment for me is that we lost in front of our own fans, in front of a full house. And the manner in which we lost, uh, take nothing away from Grimsby, but all the lads know, we all know that uh, as a team we, we dropped our standards tremendously from what we've done already this season. And uh, we always said that the team that will beat us will be because we don't play well. And of course, in the end, Unfortunately, we proved right. The 100% record had gone. Swindon cut the lead to nine points, moving second. And within a week, the shock of Grimsby had been cemented by successive defeats at Chelsea, despite Robert Lee's first goal for the club, and then at Leicester, City winners against ten men United. A five-man Newcastle wall chipped in by Wiseman's back, and it's there! It's a goal! Frank Sinclair gets the goal! It was chipped in towards the near post, and Frank Sinclair, the Chelsea fullback has got a head on the ball from no more than eight yards. Bereson puts his foot on the ball, does well, just holds it up, looks to where that pass out Robert Lee! Yes! Robert Lee gets the goal! Oh, I said he was looking for his first. He's got his first. Bereson is to be applauded there. Did brilliantly to hold the ball up, measured the cross, and Robert Lee was in like a shot. Hitchcock barely saw it. Corner kick comes in. It's half cleared by Newcastle. It'll be picked up away on that far side and driven in. Oh, free header! Mick Harford. Harford makes them pay. And Mick Harford has stolen in for his eighth of the season. Two and a half minutes play. Thompson takes the corner kick towards the edge of the area. Walsh meets it. It's there. Here they come again. Leicester City this time. Davison. Oh, good finish. Good finish by Bobby Davison. Inside the right-hand post, and disaster for Newcastle. Bobby Davison, born in South Shields, with a one-on-one -on -one with Tommy Wright. Virtually identical sort of position to the free kick at Roker Park. Again, it'll be Liam O'Brien. This time, oh, my word! He smashed it into the back of the net. Liam O'Brien, well, he curled it and he bent it at Roker. This time... He blasted it down the throat of the goalkeeper, Kevin Paul. The start of November brought a midweek trip to Birmingham. A little bit of a test after three successive defeats. It was a test, though, passed with flying colours, but at a cost. Injury to Tommy Wright not only meant a stinting goal for Kevin Brock on the evening, it also saw Pavel Cernacek taking the goalkeeper's jersey from the Northern Ireland International. It was a jersey he was unable to reclaim. I think it's essential to start, you know, get started right and maybe get you know, hopefully keep a clean sheet or something you know and get the, the bases right again and because uh, we'll always score goals and uh, it would be nice it'd be a good boost for us if we can you know win away from home offside flag stays down from car it's into peacock peacock a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and Sealy makes the save second attempt peacock it's there gavin peacock hasn't scored for a month he's ended his barren run good patient build up by birmingham holmes goes again that's a good teasing cross speedy after great goal 
David Speedy, what a good goal. Kevin Scott on the goal line. It's knocked a little bit too long. It's almost cleared and then turned in. And it's turned in by Kevin Scott, who gets his first goal of the season. Looking for a quick repost, and they get the goal, and the 17-year-old Potter has equalised. And it's deja vu time here. They've literally conceded a goal within a minute of taking the lead. Kelly, intelligent ball to square the car. Car must take it on and score, surely. It's deflected and it's in. Own goal. Own goal. The initial shot was cleared or deflected into the path. And then backtracking, it was big Trevor Matthewson who knocked the ball into the back of his own net. Victory at St Andrews was followed by an entertaining, if goalless, Sunday draw with Swindon. And then it was off to Italy. And a one-all draw with Lucchese. The crowd, just 744. It was a game, though, that marked the end of a fair few Newcastle careers. Most notably that of Mick Quinn. I thought it would be playing, you know, with it being not a very competitive game. But he pulled me and said, Molissa had no future at Newcastle United. Although I did well when I was in the team, when he picked me. That it wasn't viable for Newcastle to more or less keep me and um, he would put me on a transfer list. Quinn was one of nine on the list. He went to Coventry on loan, immediately scored eight times in his first five games and the deal became permanent in mid-December. In the meantime, the existing squad swept past promotion hopefuls Charlton Athletic at Upton Park. Clark looking to take on his marker, Scott Minto. If he can get to the dead ball and he can, Kelly turns it in. It's there. It could well be an own goal. Gavin Peacock was there. Clark has possession, finds Robert Lee. Great cross in. Oh, classic goal. Oh, my words. Clark into Lee. Ball into the box. And Gavin Peacock, well, it was a simple finish. But it was a simple finish because it was a magnificent opening carved by Lee who turned and pinpoint cross, thigh high, peacock finish. The celebrations of Robert Lee to the Newcastle fans said it all. He's created a second against his former club, Farmers Crossing. Lee Bird Nelson, surely! Gary Nelson gets the goal! The ball drops out to the far side, the Lee Clark chips in across, up goes, short goal, but a great tear! Head of there by Stephen Howey! The cross came in from Lee Clark, and there was Stephen Howey to power the header behind the hapless Bob Boulder with 19 minutes of the second half gone. Newcastle back in control here. Charlton 1, Newcastle 3. Victory against the Valiants was followed by a 2-0 win against Watford. Robert Lee's second for the club. Gavin Peacock's 11th of the campaign, and the lead was stretched to 11 points, although the Watford win was followed by what was to prove United's last home defeat of the season. Against Ascoli in the Anglo-Italian Cup, David Kelly sending off, sparking quite incredible touchline scenes. Italian officials getting involved. Kevin Scott, Alan Thompson, Barry Venison, and one of the Italian coaches has gone absolutely crazy down below us. He's a man out of control, and they're having to pull people away. It's the Italian coach, which one I don't know, Kevin Keegan, is also involved in the melee. David Kelly has been sent off, but uh, down below us, there are quite incredible scenes. Normal service, though, was soon resumed four days later, as David Kelly became villain turned hero. Peacock again, good cross on the turn, Kelly gets it ahead of his man! David Kelly's ninth of the season, he got in ahead of his marker, the header wasn't entirely positive, but it beat John Vaughan at his right-hand post. Here come Newcastle again, Robert Lee to Clark, to Kelly! Oh, what a goal, David Kelly, the half volley from 12 yards. Might break for Robert Lee, Lee controls it, edge of the 18-yard box, turning one way, then another, this time it is a penalty. This time it is a penalty. Robert Lee was clipped by Michael Cheatham. David Kelly against John Vaughan, sent off in midweek, and now a hat-trick! A hat-trick for Kelly, who goes to the Gallagher end to celebrate. Hat-trick hero, Kelly's off again, left-hand side. It's Beresford's cross in, and Gavin Peacock at the far post! Gavin Peacock goes ahead in the goal-scoring charts. He'd seen David Kelly go level with the penalty at 11 each. But Peacock pops up with his 12th of the season. Once again, the lead at the top of the first division was stretched, this time to 12 points. By the time Notts County came around, though, the following Saturday, it was nine. Tranmere had won 5-2 at Derby on the Friday. By 4.45 on the Saturday, though, it was back to 12. Barry Venison take the throw and find the feet of Robert Lee. Lee started a little more uh, livelier. It drops to Clark, the save, and then Shiddy! 
The save by Steve Cherry, but straight to Kevin Sheedy. And many people fancied him for first goal scorer. The tired limbs out there as Lee Clark gets into the area. Peacock! Second goal for Newcastle United. That's killed it. Clark into the 18-yard box. A fan and Gavin Peacock embrace. If you go for, through us man for man, uh, we've, we've got some very fit players in the side and, and we pass the ball well as well, which will make the ball do the work a lot of the time. But we're very mobile and um, I think that's been a, a, one of the pluses for us this season, the fact that um, the manager and, and the coaching staff got us very fit in the summer. From the delights of Meadow Lane, it was off to the magnificent San Nicolas Stadium in Bari. Richard and Matthew Appleby made a little bit of history as brothers starting in a United lineup. A 3-0 defeat, though, meant farewell to the ill-fated Anglo-Italian, a 2-2 draw with Cesena, the final chapter eight days later. Between times, there was another Sunday failure, this time a 1-0 defeat at Barnsley. Kelly calling for some divine intervention. The man upstairs isn't looking after us on a Sunday, is he? Um, but, uh, you know, it's, we treat it the same. It, it, it doesn't affect any of the players that it is a Sunday. You know, we, uh, we just put our days back one. You know, we've got a Thursday today and a Saturday tomorrow is going to be a Friday day for us, a five-a-side and that. Fridays as Thursdays, Saturdays as Fridays. Unfortunately, the psychology wasn't working. December the 20th, another Sunday, another disappointment. One apiece against Millwall. United with no win in four, in need of some Christmas cheer. It came against Wolves, despite an early setback. Far side picked up and turned square by Cockney into the side netting. It's in! It's in! It's not into the side netting. It's in! And a shot has rattled past Pavel Cernacek and blazed into the back of the net. It's Paul Cook, the danger man, who we've talked about all afternoon. Sheedy takes it towards the edge of the area. Again, looking towards how it's not a clear bat. Malfield, O'Brien, oh, great save by the keeper. It's in there, David Kelly. And then Clark, and in the end, Kelly will claim it. Sheedy to O'Brien, back to Kevin Scott. Looks a long ball forward, trying to find Gavin Peacock. Kelly's there, right foot shot by Kelly. Oh, what a goal! David Kelly's 47th season, right foot strike. Gave Paul Jones no earthly chance whatsoever. Newcastle have the carnival at the steel behind them. The 14th of the season from David Kelly. Get out of two. Wolves won. If the Wolves win, though, restored confidence and a 12-point lead. Two days later, it was a very different story. 11 months after a 5-2 defeat at Oxford had marked the end of Ozzy Ardiles, United returned to the manor. Again, they were turned over. Magilton and Joy Beecham then. Over the ball, what will Oxford conjure up? Magilton, right foot shot. Oh, what a goal by Jim Magilton! A 4-2 defeat at Oxford, the only consolation, a first league goal since September the 2nd for Lee Clark. As United said goodbye to 92, seeing in the new year with FA Cup success against Port Vale. Kelly on the edge of the area. Shimmy's one with Andy. Shot by Kelly. It's saved by the ball. Peter Swan and Lee skimmed it away from Swan. Lee into the penalty area now. Shot by Lee. Oh my goal! Robert Lee, right foot strike into the far corner of the net. Lee turns one way, then the other, and wins the possession. Gets away from and gets it forward to Gavin Peacock. And a hat trick here. Peacock there. Chance for City goal number four. A shot by Gavin Peacock. Came back to Kevin City. And Kevin City with an empty night. They came to do a job and they made it awkward for us. Uh, but as soon as we got the first goal, it opened up and they had to come for a bit of a result. And then they played into our hands. Once we've gone two, three goals up, uh, there's a lot of space for us to create. Uh, we've got a few adventurous players in the side and, uh, like you say, it could have been more. A great start to 1993 through to round four of the FA Cup at a meeting with Rotherham. Before that, though, a trip to Ashton Gate. Another away win, but only after Peacock had marked United's card as to City's danger man. Andrew Cole, I've played with him, he's a very quick um, individual player, capable of scoring a lot of goals. I mean, I think he's already got about 16, 15, 16. Um, very good individual player, has to be watched all the time. Cole away on that far side, taking on Stephen Howey. Maintains possession of the ball, outside himself finds Martin Scott. Good cross in, Pavel Cernacek. Picks it up, coming, doesn't come, and Wayne Allison hits the goal. Wayne Allison scores. 
as Pavel Svernacek was a little bit unsure about the cross. Free kick to Newcastle, right hand side, level with the 18-yard box, taken by Shinny Liam O'Brien, almost gets a free header, it's an own goal! David Kelly is being congratulated, the cross comes in, right-footed, it's cleared only as far as Liam O'Brien, lovely chip in to find Kelly, cross of box and to Kevin Scott scores! Unselfish work by David Kelly, he did brilliantly there! United then 14 points clear, but still no room for complacency as the Magpies prepared to meet Peterborough, armed with old boys Darren Bradshaw and David Roach on loan. Roach just one of seven players transfer listed by the manager. We put it out earlier than any other club, and I think you're now seeing, if you like, the rewards for having done that, in that we have now got something like five or six players. Peter Garland's gone, Mickey Quinn's gone, and four others are out on loan. And with a view to moving. Ball played into Gavin Peacock, cross it's there! Robert Lee with a stunner for Newcastle. Cross in by Peacock, met on the volley by Robert Lee. His fourth goal for Newcastle, Ian Bennett didn't stand a chance. It's Robert Lee! Oh, what a goal by Robert Lee! He's been the man of the match and he scored a superb second. He's been put through on goal, and Robert Lee has finished from 18 yards. Barry Venison plays the one-two. Venison with only the keeper to beat. It's saved. Picked up by Gavin Peacock. Peacock's crossed the ball by Kelly. It's there, David Kelly, 16th of the season. Brilliant work by Venison. Good cross by Peacock. And a great header at the far post by David Kelly. David Kelly continuing to hit the goal-scoring trail, 16 for the season, but still speculation over a big money signing at St James's. Les Ferdinand for £3 million was the latest rumour, the United manager refusing to rule out the possibility. Of course it will happen, it's inevitable. But if you're asking me when, I wouldn't like to put a time in my... It might be next week, it might be two weeks, but it certainly will happen. Make no mistake about that. And that amount of money will be involved? If well, necessary. It, it, every case is different. In the case of someone like Ferdinand or Shearer, if the asking price is three and a half million quid, yes, it would be made available. But that doesn't mean to say we've got three and a half million to spend on a kid who's 19, 20. You know, there's a different price. It would depend on the product. While the rumours continued, the present side continued on their merry way. The young Tories brought the trip to South End forward two weeks. Up goes Kevin Scott, heads it down. Drops back to Scott again. Left to Robert Lee. Shot by Lee. Rebounds off Steve. There we go! Gavin Peacock! 18th of the season. Call him on near the edge of the area. Checks inside of Kevin Scott. Goes down. Penalty kick's been given. Sussex win it. Goal! All square here at Brooks Hall. After 38 minutes, left foot strike by Andy Sussex. Into the right hand corner of the net. All square. South End United 1, Newcastle 1. United with 60 points for the season, but now the diversion of the FA Cup. Millmore Rotherham was the destination. Keegan from his Doncaster days, well aware of David and Goliath Cup ties. One of the greatest memories I had was beating Sheffield Wednesday at Hillsborough when they were in the first division, it then was, and we were in the fourth. So I know what it's like to say both sides. I've played in a winning final, I've played in a losing final, both with Liverpool. But uh, it, for us, it comes as a lovely diversion from the league. You know, things are going ever so well in the league, as everybody knows. The team's playing with confidence. And the cup is a welcome break, I think, it, although it, it's not going to be an easy match. Clark's crossing. Mike break to Robert Lee! Oh, the goal, Robert Lee, from the edge of the area. Crossed by Lee Clark, who goes to the Newcastle fans. So, too, Robert Lee behind the goal. And Lee has been given a licence to kill. And again, he started scoring. they will be wild at... The substitute, virtually with his first touch, runs over the ball. Oh, Barrick shot! Oh, it's come off the post and in! It's a goal by Nigel Johnson. Nigel Johnson gets the goal, and Rotherham have an equaliser. It was a splendidly struck free kick by Dean Barrick. It bent and it dipped. It hit the inside of the post, and Johnson got the goal. The two teams had to try again in ten days' time in the league. Meanwhile, Tranmere's 5-1 defeat at Notts County meant the possibility of an 18-point lead with victory at Luton the following Wednesday. It ended, though, nil apiece. Pavel Cernacek keeping out the Hatters, Alec Chamberlain denying David Kelly. I thought their keeper, the last 20, 25 minutes, was exceptional. And Pavel made two, two world-class saves, you know, just like he's been... It's come to expect from him, really, over uh, the last few weeks. He's been, he's been magnificent for us. But, uh, we, you know, we're very, very pleased with the points. It's, uh, 
it's a horrible pitch. It's um, you know, it was a miserable night. We worked hard and we, we got our just result, uh, rewards, really. United then held West Ham beat Bristol City to go second. The lead was still 13 points, though. As former United boss Arthur Cox prepared to bring Derby County north, Cox and Keegan again in direct opposition. I think when, when you're a player like I, I've been, I've been so lucky to play for so many good managers, you take a little bit of each of them. And certainly, I think if you ask me what his qualities are, which is a roundabout way of maybe uh, of saying what you're after, he definitely, um, we worked hard. He didn't expect anything to be given him. Uh, football was his life. He was besotted with it. I don't think I'm quite like that. But I think if you cut us open, looked inside, you'd see pretty much the same sort of person inside. We're not the same on the exterior. A shot comes in and a goal for Derby County, scored by Tommy Johnson after two minutes of the game. Wasn't cleared. The ball was out to the edge of the six-yard area, left-hand side at the Leeser's end. A shot by Johnson, and Derby find themselves a goal ahead. Bracewell finds Robert Lee. And Lee holds possession far side, gets a deep cross in, Kilkline's there, drops to a blind shot by Brown, goal! In the final minute of the game, Liam O'Brien, right foot shot into the left-hand corner of the net, and Newcastle United have surely pulled a point out of this game when it looked as though they wouldn't get anything. United then held by Derby County, their third consecutive draw before a live TV audience. Three days later, though, they were back on the winning trail and booking a visit to Premier League Blackburn in round five of the FA Cup. He really just wrapped himself around the ball, Gavin Peacock. The referees allowed play to run on as David Kelly. Kelly with a goal. A mistake in the Rotherham ranks. And David Kelly, it was slightly deflected, but he's driven the ball beyond Billy Mercer. And there's a huge sigh of relief breathed here. Ball back in by Benison. Offside flight quite right. He stays down. Lee Clark, Clark taking it all away. Lee Clark to score. Lee Clark is delighted with that one. The ball played over the top. Tremendous ball in. And it was latched on to by Clark, who's taken the ball on. The keeper seemed to be backtracking. And in the end, he just slid the ball in, left-footed, into the bottom left-hand corner. Blackburn Rovers would come ten days later. Before that, in the absence of a Saturday game, United's lead would be cut to ten points by West Ham, with the club's attention turned to Fratton Park, Portsmouth. Stephen Howey missed only his second league game of the season. The Magpies suffered only their fifth league defeat. We'll just have to battle on without him. Uh, we have got great cover there. I mean, you saw Brian Kilcline come in and do a terrific job. And uh, we've also got Alan Nielsen, should we get another injury, so, and Benny Christensen. So we're well covered, but uh, obviously disappointing for the boy because uh, he's been on fire and he must be very, very close to sort of getting into the England sort of setups at his, at his age level. Chris Price lays it forward, loses out to Beresford. Aspinall picks it, the action up again for Pompey and runs it through to William. William turns away. Burns takes it for Portsmouth to the near post, flick back, shot comes in! Oh, oh, shot! Oh, my word, what a finish! And by a central defender, Dick Simons, with an unstoppable shot, has made it Portsmouth 2, Newcastle, United nil, and Pompey have taken control of this match. Sheedy out to the left to Beresford, in comes the fullback, cuts inside, can he get another shot? It's a penalty! Newcastle have been awarded a penalty. Beresford pulled down, I think, by Mark Chamberlain. Here comes Kelly, and he's hit the bar and missed. He's missed. Surely that's last, the last chance for Newcastle. The win took Pompey fifth in the table, 15 points behind United. West Ham, though, beat Peterborough 2-1 to close the gap to seven, as one of the club's most eventful weeks of the season began to take shape. As the playing side of things prepared for Blackburn and the Cup, planning permission was granted for the Leasers' End and the all-new North Stand. Sir John Hall, though, was not altogether happy. Ticket chaos for the Rovers' game overshadowed news of redevelopment. And in many, many ways, the support last night was the passion of support, if we can direct it in the right manner. But I say again, if, if the club's been asked to be responsible, then the fans out there, that minority who get soccer a bad name in every club, They've got to be responsible. If they're not going to be, then we, the club, and the good supporters don't want them. And we don't want them in the redevelopment in James's Park. As far as the game itself was concerned, it was without a doubt the season's most disappointing moment. Stephen Howey and the bedridden Kevin Keegan missed the game. Peacock was optimistic beforehand. It all, though, turned terribly sour. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be a, a cracking game, hopefully. 
Um, I think of any time that we could go down there to play them, this is as good a time as, as any because perhaps, you know, they've not hit as good a form lately. Um, and, and we're on a high because we've been playing well, we're at the top of the league. So hopefully we can go down there and, and pull off a little bit of a, an upset and, and beat them. The ball here, though, is at the feet of Wegley. Wegley goes round his man. Oh, he scored! Roy Wegley has scored with almost the last kick of the game. He's turned away from his marker. Kevin Scott has his head in his hands. If ever there was an injustice in football, then that was it. At the end of the day, it's just difficult to get away from the end result, you know. And uh, it's like I say, the end, you know, the lads just got it in as much so for them. Tremendous fans in behind that goal, you know. Very slowly destroying false lads. Now we've got to pick ourselves up and just concentrate on the league, is it? As it goes now. United and Lee Clark out of the FA Cup and with West Ham winning at Watford, the lead was cut to four points, the smallest margin since way back in October. Blackburn was followed by a deserved point though at Upton Park against West Ham and a disappointing home draw with Bristol Rovers. Both games finished nil apiece as United found their season once again disrupted by live TV. Yeah, it is, I think, more the Sunday games. These, these are the ones that, that, that seem to knock you out your stride and we're into what I call a Sunday stride now. It's as if Saturdays don't exist anymore. And in some ways, that, that's the thing that I worry about more than anything, is when lads get time with the family to enjoy the kids at weekends, especially on a Sunday. But, you know, we, we mustn't complain. The only reason we're playing on Sundays is because we've been successful. And if that's the price you have to pay, then I think it's a very small price. West Ham on a Sunday was followed by Tranmere Rovers seven days later. Time for a tactical switch and how it worked. Playing Robert Lee up front, they swept Rovers aside. A brace for Lee took his tally to eight. David Kelly also ending a five-game drought. I was talking to Liam um, the night before the game in, in the room saying that, you know, that um, I just fancy, when you get that feeling, you just fancy yourself to score. And I said to him, I said, um, that I, f I fancy myself to score. I said, oh, oh Gavin's going to score. I said, I'm, I'm, you know, one of us will score tomorrow, no problem. And, uh, and it, it comes to, come to be the truth, so I was obviously well pleased. I think uh, managed to start to change things around and, um, and cause perhaps uh, other teams to... A few problems by switching the players around, and uh, it seems to be working at the moment. Three points at Prenton Park, coupled with West Ham's failure to win at Roker 24 hours earlier, meant March and a lead of seven points. Saturday, the 6th, the 30th of the season, brought Brentford to St James's Park. Joe Allen and Gary Blissett led the line for the Bees. Would Allen, a member of United Youth Cup winning side of the 80s, return to Sting United? Peacock feared the worst. He needn't, though, have worried. <laughs> We saw how Bristol Rovers came to us and how they performed and they're down the bottom. So uh, Brentford are going to do the same sort of thing. And I, I feel if we can get an early goal, um, we could then really kill them off. But, you know, we've got to go out there from the start and try and put them under pressure. Corner kick in. It was nodded back across his own penalty area by Mickey Bennett. Dropped by the keeper, Robert Lee. David Kelly! David Kelly gets the goal and Kelly has gone to the Gallagher end. And the reward that they needed, Ben Stead is furious. He's run 10 yards outside his 18-yard box to pursue the referee. Clark inside the 18 yards, back to Mark Stimson, it'll break for Robert Lee, turns it back to Bracewell! Paul Bracewell scores for Newcastle United. He scored on opening day, unselfish work by Robert Lee. Back into the path of Bracewell. Robert Lee, it's Lee Clark, it falls to Clark and Clark scored. Everybody seemed to stop and Lee Clark latched onto it. He needed no second invitation, and um, despite Graham Benstead getting a hand on it, it's deflected into the corner of the net. Crossing at the far post, it's an own goal! Kevin Scott falling away, he had Gary Blissett behind him. The cross came in, it was destined for Blissett, and Kevin Scott's header hits the inside of his own post and goes in. Simpson will try the more orthodox cross, a pen at the far post, what a header! Robert Lee, two against Tranmere last week. Patient build-up, good cross by Mark Stimson. Robert Lee's up and it's there! Sensational goal by Robert Lee from fully 70 yards. It's been stalked off though. It's been cancelled out. It was a through ball played by Robert Lee to Alan Nielsen. The keeper, Graham Benstead, must have been 20 yards outside of his own 18-yard box. He cleared it, but only as far as Lee, who was fully 15 yards inside his own half. He volleyed it back over the keeper and into the net, a quite remarkable goal. And then it was cancelled out, presumably, for an offside decision against a Brentford player. Good ball by Beresford inside the area. Looking to find Lee Clark! 
Clark's second of the game is seventh of the season. He puts the shirt over the top of his head. The ball played in by Beresford straight through the keeper's legs. Lee Clark has got his second of the game. It was carnival time, really. Um, it was a beautiful day. The sun was shining. People were standing out there with just t-shirts on and having a real good time. And we were giving 110 percent and put, spraying the ball about like we can. And uh, everyone was really enjoying it, you know. And uh, you know, we, we just uh, we're just going to give it that one last push now for these uh, last what, 13, 14 games as it is, and uh, hopefully uh, get in uh, get in the Premier League next season and just uh, give, give the fans what they deserve. It was Newcastle's second five-goal haul of the season in front of 30,006 fans, and it preempted a quite remarkable week, a quite remarkable week of spending. They may have been seven points clear, but with hindsight, it was perhaps the three pieces of business conducted in the United on Monday, March the 8th. We had the arrival of Mark Robinson and Scott Sellers for £1.1 million, courtesy of one man. Sir John Hall and, and the directors, they've been tremendous on this one. Um, we were going to wait till the end of the season to get Robinson because uh, we feel that we've got enough here, obviously, to get us up. But with Barry Venison getting injured, uh, we just had a little meeting yesterday afternoon at 2 o'clock and I said, hey, let's go and get him now. I've always enjoyed playing here. It's always a great atmosphere. Um... You know, the, things are going well for the team, so hopefully we can carry that on. Scott Sellers and Mark Robinson both made their debuts in the numbers 2 and 11 shirts against Charlton. Chance there for Robert Lee to burst through, edge of the area, shot pass to his goal! Pass Mike Salmon, Robert Lee after 47 seconds, and he salutes the Gallagher. An amazing start here for Newcastle United. Robert Lee set through onto the edge of the area and he barely hesitated. Stuck the ball on his left foot and rifled the shot past Mike Salmon, who could hardly believe it. Oh, and how he's been dispossessed. This could be the equaliser, and it is. Gary Nelson making the most of a dreadful error there by Steve Howey on the edge of the box. And in dash Gary Nelson to just toe poke the ball past Cernicek. Sellers Ross from the left and ahead of by David Kelly. David Kelly has just given Newcastle a 2 1 lead in first half injury time, and it's Scott Sellers getting the joint congratulations because it was Sellers who played the ball in from the right and Kelly who was the first to react. It's the number six, Stuart Palmer, curling one in for Leeburn's ahead, and that's the equaliser for Charlton. Carl Lieburn, as matter of fact as you like, has made it 2-2. A point against the Valiants, 29,582 the midweek crowd to see the debutants. 24 hours later, though, the deal of the season had been struck. The transfer record had been smashed. £1.75 million had been spent. And Andrew Cole had arrived on Tyneside. If you say he's the final piece of the jigsaw, uh, in terms of the fact we've been looking for a striker, as you know, for a long time, um, we've looked... We've gone down a lot of avenues, some of them have been in one-way streets and dead ends and cul-de-sacs, whatever you want to call them. But we've never given up with this lad because no matter where we looked, no matter who we inquired for, and we've been abroad, as you well know, we kept coming back to him because from point of view of price, age and uh, potential, we always felt that he was the best investment for this club to make for the next four years at least. I think the crowd here will like him. He certainly will fit in with our style of play. I'm convinced of that. And um, he'll make the competition for place in the team even more intense and I think you know that's the way it's got to be. My first impression is that they're a very good team you know, and the way I seen it when I was at Bristol City they're destined to get promotion and hopefully I'll be part of that now. 21 year old Andrew Cole made his debut on the Saturday it was at the county ground Swindon he was on as a late substitute for Liam O'Brien he couldn't though prevent a sixth league defeat. Venison just tries to think it to find Scott Sellers again and finds him Kelly inside the area shot by Kelly! Goal! Paul Borden left hand side back into the area again to Martin Ling. White Swan goes down, challenge referee says the penalty kick. The challenge came in from Steve Howey down, clatters Steve White, and it's a penalty kick for Swindon Town. Borden then left footed goal, number seven of the season for Paul Borden. 51 minutes gone, all square at the county ground. Corner kick taken by Paul Borden, in it comes, drops this time for Mitchell, shot by Mitchell. Goal! Colin Calderwood has put Swindon Town ahead by two goals to one on 54 minutes. Got a kick played in from uh, Paul Gordon, flicked on this time, and there was Colin Calderwood, the Swindon Town skipper, to get the ball behind Pavel Sericic. I keep saying that if we play as well as we have been doing, even including Swindon Town on Saturday, we played ever so well. We didn't deserve to get beat, we got beat. 
you got to accept that. Referees' decisions uh, went against us, but maybe they'll go for us in the, in the running. Four goals in four games for David Kelly, 21 in all for the season, but defeat at the county ground was soon followed by victory against another county, Notts County, and what a win it was. It also marked the start of Andrew Cole's phenomenal goal-scoring finish. Michael Johnson makes the mistake. It's picked up by Robert Lee. Oh, Lee gets the first goal. Robert Lee, although having said that, it may well be uh, Scott Sellers who's getting part of the uh, acclaim. But uh, it was Sellers who won it, and Robert Lee, it broke very kindly for him. Cole finds Lee. Lee's teasing. Cross in! David Kelly gets the goal seconds after missing. David Kelly, the cross in from Robert Lee. It eluded everybody, and Kelly from no more than five yards to beat Steve Cherry. Clark's got Kelly inside the area. It's a great cross in. Oh, what a goal by David Kelly. Oh, magnificent goal. Ball down the line by Andrew Cole. An absolutely magnificent cross by Lee Clark. And a flying header by David Kelly. It's tally for the season to 23. But if he goes on to score 43, he won't score a better goal than that from a better move than that. Venison to David Kelly, he's wide out on the right-hand side, teasing ball into Cole. Oh, Andrew Cole! Andrew Cole with the goal. The goal that they've been waiting for. It was a ball in by David Kelly. It was taken down by Andrew Cole. And in an instant, he turned and virtually broken the net. The boy who's arrived for one and three quarter million has them on their feet. The 21-year-old. What a response from the youngster. Newcastle United 4, Notts County nil. Victory before 30,029. The start of Andrew Cole's scoring sequence. 12 goals in 11 starts at the end of the season. The gap, though, on that particular Saturday stayed at five points. West Ham won as well, as did Portsmouth. They moved third, courtesy of Guy Whittingham's 37th goal of the season. By Tuesday night, though, it was 40. A hat-trick against Oxford takes Pompey second, as Newcastle lose 1-0 disappointingly at Watford. And Oxford beat West Ham United. The good news, though, John Beresford gets a call from Graham Taylor. Yeah, I honestly couldn't be more pleased if I hadn't been a call-up for myself. You know, I think, uh, for a start, it's a, it's a reflection on all the club, I think. And I think John Beresford said that several times already. But he's had an outstanding season. Um, he's a very exciting uh, player. He's just at the right age. He's really, the next two or three years could be the best three of his career. I certainly hope so from Newcastle's point of view. John Beresford, who links up with the England party to fly out to Izmir for training sessions as well. No game on the Saturday for Newcastle. As Sunday sees a visit from rejuvenated Birmingham City. David Sullivan, Karen Brady take over at St Andrews. They're 2 0 up. They almost spoil the party. Keegan, though, remains as focused as ever. Birmingham yet to have a chance until right now because Andy Savile has just put Birmingham in the lead. Signed from Hartlepool last week and that's his third goal in his first two games for Birmingham. Turning on the six-yard line to send a left-foot shot past Pavel Cernicek. It's with Andy Savile, the goal scorer, the butt of the booze. He's crossing the box, looks for the header. Morgan, Ian Rogerson has dived through for that one. A header from the cross there and a shot stuns St James's Park now because just six minutes from half-time, Ian Rogerson has put a header past Pavel Cernicek, who stands on the goal line, hands on hips, he can't believe it. David Kelly on the edge of the box there with Trevor Matthewson. Kelly's worked his way through, yeah. and it pushed in by Andy Cole. And at last, the Newcastle fans have something to cheer about. 15 minutes into the second half, Kelly sliding the ball across the box, and there was Andy Cole to stab the shot home. Robert Lee equalises for Newcastle United, sliding in a shot at the far post after Scott Sellers got a cross in from the left. And after 61 minutes, Newcastle are suddenly on level terms at 2-2. Just a minute ago, Andy Cole pulled one back, and now Robert Lee has made it 2-2. I can't wait to be in the Premier League. Um, I can't wait for the excitement of going out next season, maybe, and experimenting a little bit more than you can in the situation we're in now. There's a lot of things I've got in my mind as manager that I'd like to do uh, and try out, but now's not the time to do it. And... Uh, I think we've just got to finish off what we've started so well. Never previously was the relief so apparent as Beresford, Clark and Cole flew out to Turkey in a private jet. United, though, are held by struggling Birmingham, but so too are West Ham United at home to Millwall. The lead then remains five points. Questions, though, are being asked. 
The answer provided by a quite sensational five days. A win at Cambridge and six goals against Barnsley. With six games left, it's United 81 points. Pompey and West Ham, 73. Chested down by David Kelly. Back to Scott Sellers. Looks up, gets the cross in. In comes Harry Hedder. Goal! Stephen Howey! Clayton picks up the plate. And eventually, Steve Howey clears deep. And Kelly's after it. Kelly's chest down. Inside the area. Left foot shot. Oh, yes, it's there! David Kelly's 24th of the season. We've had 26 seconds of the second half gone. Long ball played forward by Steve Howey. David Kelly on to it. Chests it down and runs it behind John Phelan from just inside the area. Cole clear this time. Shot by Cole. Goal! Goal number three for Newcastle United. Andy Cole stood for the Magpies. Once again, the long ball plays forward. A right foot shot by Andy Cole behind John Phelan into the far left-hand corner of the net. Towards the edge of the area, Andrew Cole turns away from his marker, turns away from his marker again. Oh! Andrew Cole with a goal. What a goal. Turns away from two Barnsley players and then fires in a shot which goes through the goalkeeper's legs. Kelly's control first, let him down. Goal! Andrew Cole with a goal, his second of the game. Cole drops it off to Bracewell. Bracewell to David Kelly. Kelly's ball in behind, looking to invite the pace of Robert Lee. Lee, so strong, holds the ball up into the box. Cole! Yes! Andrew Cole's hat trick. Andy Cole gets the goal and he gets his first hat trick for Newcastle United. Robert Lee with the cross in. The defenders were at fault, but he needed no second invitation at all. And he beat the goalkeeper from no more than six yards. Cole shakes the hand of everybody. He looks to the heavens. He can't quite believe it. They've blocked to the man called Andrew Cole, the man who gets goals. He's got another, he's got three this evening. How he's done brilliantly there. Read the situation perfectly and played the ball in behind everybody to Lee Clark. Clark scampering away. Can he find the angle? It's there! Lee Clark through the keeper's legs. Away on that far side, Kelly's got Robert Lee making the run. Lee's got clear of his marker. Penalty, surely. Beresford, it's there! John Beresford goes down on his hands and knees. He can hardly believe it. Beresford's first goal for Newcastle United. They love him to death on Tyneside. And he just gives one enormous fist to the Milburn stand. You can almost see from here the relief, the excitement. John Beresford has got Newcastle's fifth. Kelly's ball into the box. Scott Sellers! Scott Sellers has got his first for Newcastle. It could be a night of firsts. Lee Clark's break. The ball played in. Left-hand touchline by David Kelly. And there was Scott Sellers with a left-foot volley. United have got half a dozen. Newcastle six. Andrew Cole with what proved the first of two hat-tricks in the last 11 games of the season. John Beresford and Scott Sellers with their first goals for the club. United, though, would of course go one better before the season was out. After such performances, Wolves would seem a formality. They travelled to Molyneux. United, though, were given a timely reminder, ignoring the warnings of Barry Venison. It's by no means a foregone conclusion. It's going to be a difficult game. There'll be a big crowd again. Uh, we'll have a lot of our fans down there, but we've got, we're racing for the championship, that's what we're racing for, we're racing for promotion and then the championship, so it's a fantastic game to play in, and hopefully it'll be a nice one to watch. The offside flag this time stays down, Rankin looks to take it on past Kevin Scott, he does, he squares, it's there, Andy Much has got the goal, it was a goal created by Mark Rankin, and finished by Andy Much, his tenth goal of the season. But really, it was a little bit slack as far as Newcastle are concerned. Newcastle, one of their most inept performances of the season, but the 11 had looked steady. Cernacek, Venison, Beresford, Bracewell, who come in for Liam O'Brien, Scott, Howie, Lee, Cole, Kelly, Clark and Sellers. The 11, which was likely to see them through to the end of the season. Portsmouth, meanwhile, were winning again. Benny Christensen's first goal for the club since his move from Tyneside. Whittingham's 44th, and the gap was cut to five points. And then after the Easter Monday rain, Washington out Oxford United at St James's. They won again against Derby to cut the lead to just two points. Saturday took Pompey to struggling Notts County as United go to the Lions' den. Lee knew all about the atmosphere. Clark and Colo had the winning solution.
I mean, I've played a few London derbies against them with Charlton and that, um, and the atmosphere is, they, they create the den is very good. The fans get behind them, and it's an intimidating place, you know, and we've got to make sure that we, we're not intimidated by it and um, go out there and show them that we can play. Ball played in by Venison to Cole, that's a great turn. Lee Clark! Clark with a goal! Goes to the Elderton Road end. The turn by Andrew Cole made it. Cole couldn't then control it, but it dropped loose to Lee Clark, and he stabbed it home. He's absolutely delighted. Kevin Keegan's on his feet. Venison has the free kick on halfway, right of centre, just about on the edge of the centre circle. Looks long to kill Klein. A good win in the air. It almost drops to Cole. It does drop to Cole. Oh, Andrew Cole's got a goal. Andrew Cole, brilliant work. He's absolutely mobbed by black and white shirts. It was a great header down by Kill Klein. He turned in an instant, Andrew Cole. It looked as if it had run away from him, but in the end, it dropped. He stroked it beyond Casey Keller. I felt today for the first time maybe they were feeling the pressure a bit. They were a little bit uptight. Players were starting to get a little bit angry with each other. And uh, the goal just settled the nerves. And from then on I thought we probably could have won by more. We certainly looked dangerous on the break. And uh, I was very, very pleased with their attitude. You don't always play super football to win championships. I know that from my Liverpool days. And it won't be any different here with Newcastle United this season. Perhaps the most important away win of the season to date. Perhaps the away win which finally convinced Newcastle that they could go on and win the championship in style. Just three weekends remained. Portsmouth had won at Notts County, and then they beat Wolves the following Saturday to knock the Magpies off top spot for the first time since September the 12th. The lapse, though, lasted just 24 hours. It rained, it poured. Keegan wished Roker well, but the tying weird double was Newcastle's. I do think the North East can stand two very big clubs, uh, certainly not just in the, this division, but in the Premier League as well. But uh, we can't do them any favours next week, and they certainly won't look to do us any. Carried away in the breeze towards the edge of the area, surely Butcher climbing all over Scott. Indeed he is, and Keith Hackett awards the free kick. Terry Butcher absolutely furious, but to be fair, he did look as if he was climbing. Scott may have been making a back for him, but it's a free kick in a very, very difficult position. It's on the edge of the D on the edge of the area, just left of centre, almost identical to the position from which Liam O'Brien, of course, scored the winner at Roker back in October. No Liam O'Brien in the side. Bracewell's over the ball. Robert Lee might try a crack, so too Barry Venison. Lee might try the curler here. Bracewell over the ball, orchestrating things. The former Sunderland player, Robert Lee, perhaps looks to bend it. No, they leave it to Scott Sellers. It's there! Scott Sellers has got a goal! First goal of the game, Scott Sellers. Bent around the wall, the opposite way to the one that Tony Norman expected. Newcastle will celebrate going back top of the first division. Keith Hackett blows the full-time whistle. Newcastle United have won the 116th time with Derby. Pavel Cernacek falls face down. He's absolutely delighted. Newcastle United players go to the Gallagher end. They haven't played particularly well by their own standards, Newcastle, but this is as happy and as buoyant as I've seen them all season. They came into the game second in the first division table. An enormous hug for John Beresford from Pavel Cernacek. We are top of the league, screamed the Milburn stand, and that giant black and white banner is unfurled opposite us in the East stand. Newcastle United... Toon Army. 30,364, the biggest crowd of the season, and that was to stand as Division One's best for the 1992-93 campaign. Victory, though, was followed by a trip to the Belfry, playing golf, table tennis, generally relaxing. A break for the squad with just three games left, and a squad without a game for nine days. On the penultimate Saturday of the season, Portsmouth missed out on the chance to go back top. They were beaten by who else but Sunderland at Roker Park. Four goals to one, Walsh and Butters both sent off. It meant that anything but a West Ham victory at Swindon on the Sunday and United were promoted without kicking a ball. As it was, Billy Bonds and his hammers beat Glenn Hoddle and Swindon and as a result it was to Grimsby and the possibility of victory and the championship. Swarms of black and white descended upon South Humberside. They weren't to be disappointed. What a night. Robert Lee's through ball looking to find Andrew Cole. Cole's goal is there! They're up the bench! They're up the bench! Andrew Cole has scored! With just 21 seconds of the second half play, Andrew Cole was released. And Cole, like a bullet and like a knife through the heart of the defence, raced on to beat Reese Wilmot from what 
15 yards. Magnificent goal. Lee Clark celebrates. So too 10,000 Geordies on Humberside. Cole just takes the man away. Kelly in on goal. David Kelly, can he stay on his feet? Kelly! Oh, what a goal! He stayed on his feet. And David Kelly has sparked unbelievable scenes here. They are on the pitch from every quarter. They'll have to get off. But Kelly played in by Cole, went round the keeper, and just when it seemed that Kelly would go down, his momentum, his strength kept him on his feet, and he slid the ball in, and Kelly gets his 25th and most important goal of the season. Newcastle United are champions. They're promoted. The fans need to get off. They are getting off. And what a way to finish a game. I've never seen as many photographers round a dugout in my life. The referee blows. It's all over. The Premier League and the Division One Championship go to Newcastle United. Players race off with grins and smiles as broad as you like. Lee Clark stays on the field to celebrate. The fans have poured on. The horses have come on. But these are the sort of celebrations worthy of championships, worthy of promotion to the Premier League. Each and every one of the Newcastle personnel are down the tunnel, barring two men. One, David Kelly, is on the shoulders of fans being taken to the Osman end. The other is 20-year-old Lee Clark on the shoulders of some 40 Newcastle fans. You'll have to drag Lee Clark off here. David Kelly has a black and white bobble hat on. He's in unison with the fans, their fists raised. The celebrations have started. The 1992-93 champions of the First Division, the side who will represent the northeast of England in the Premier League in 1993-94 are Newcastle United. I've only been at the club for 15, 16 months and it's been absolutely unbelievable. You know, I've been out the game for such a long time and I forgot what it was like to win something and to actually do it in your first year. It's a credit to everyone concerned with the club and certainly the players because they've been a credit to the club, they've been a credit to their families and a credit to themselves and they deserve everything they've got this season. Absolutely brilliant, Mick. It's never happened to me before, it's absolutely brilliant. But it just shows you what, what can be achieved. I mean, uh, Gem's put millions and millions into the club and our ground's going to be brilliant as well in two or three years, you know, when it's all finished off. And, uh, you know, we've got a team that's in the Premier Division now. To be honest, I couldn't sleep last night because I knew we were so close but yet so far and the excitement was uh, immense, you know, and... Uh, it was uh, very difficult to get to sleep last night, but, uh, you know, it's all over and it's all ended very happily. And uh, for them great fans out there, the, uh, the, the great moments come. Speaking from a coaching point of view, they've been a great bunch of lads to work with all year, right from the very first day of pre-season. And uh, more than anything else in the world, I'm delighted for them because there's obviously quite a number of them who've never ever set foot in the Premier League, as it now is. And uh, I think they'll, they'll, they'll grace it and hopefully they'll stick together next year. Obviously, possibility of an influx of one or two players, but, you know, you look forward to things like that. It puts everybody on the toes. And like you say, you're going to places like Manchester United, Everton, Liverpool, Arsenal. And I'm looking forward to that because I never achieved that as a player either, other than in cup ties. Derek Fazakali, the unsung hero at St James's Park. Terry McDermott, Lee Clark and David Kelly, who 12 months earlier had scored the goal that kept them in the second division. Now he scores the goal that clinches the First Division Championship. The euphoria of South Humberside, though, was followed by the lull after the storm and a Thursday night win against Oxford. Scott Sellers helps it on its way to David Kelly. Kelly can turn. Cole's got an opening. They've got a man on this far side in space. Clark tries to shot. Oh! Lee Clark, what a goal. He had the option of Gavin Peacock. There was very little backlift. He didn't imagine for a moment it would beat the keeper from 25 yards. Didn't seem to have a lot of pace, but the North East Footballer of the Year has celebrated his award with his 10th goal of the season. Newcastle's 50th in the league at St James's Park this season. Beresford level with the Oxford 18-yard box. Inside that box to Cole. Got a chance to make up. Oh! My word, what a goal! Absolutely stunning goal by Andrew Cole. It was almost identical to the one he got his first goal for Newcastle United when he scored against Notts County, right-hand side. This time it was left-hand side. The angle, if anything, was even tighter. 
and he turned and he hit a thunderous drive behind Paul Rees. Cross comes in, they pulled one back. Nicky Cusack has got a goal. Cross, right hand side, came in and he dived in ahead of Kevin Scott. And we've had two in 60 seconds United two, Oxford one. Those who feared an anti climax after Oxford United, though, were to be rewarded with the magnificent seven. Saturday saw West Ham United clinch automatic promotion. Sunday saw scenes unrivaled the length and breadth of the country as Tyneside welcomed the champions. Beresford chips a ball in edge of the area looking to find David Kelly on his chest. Great save by the keeper. Andrew Cole! Andrew Cole gets the goal! Throw into the feet of Lee, who's been able to turn outside of his boot, finds Cole back into Robert Lee. It's there! Robert Lee, second goal of the game. Good work by Andrew Cole, dispossesses David Oldfield, finds Lee Clark, cross in, David Kelly! David Kelly, what a goal! The cross in by Lee Clark, the ball won by Andrew Cole, and David Kelly rises, leaps like a salmon. Lee Clark to Kelly! David Kelly gets his second of the game. He goes to Scott Sellers. Lee Clark it was with the final pass in and David Kelly who spent the morning reading back page headlines of Skouravi for Newcastle is beginning to answer those who say that he should be replaced in the Premier League and that's a good header down to Cole, it's deflected it in it took a deflection off Colin Hill but Andrew Cole will claim it Lee Clark to Scott Sellers to Robinson, good cross in, Kelly! Oh, a hat-trick for David Kelly! Absolutely incredible! David Kelly stands at the Gallagher's. He waves nonchalantly. But that is the moment to savour. That is the moment of the season so far. The cross in. A hat-trick for Kelly. Forget Skouravi. You've got a striker of your own here. Magnificent header. Magnificent goal. Who would believe it? The half-time whistle is about to blow. Newcastle 6, Leicester 0. Lee Clark with a bit of space. Plays it into Andrew Cole. Cole with a hat-trick! Andrew Cole with a hat-trick goal. The floodgates have opened again in the second. The through ball in, and Andrew Cole needed no second invitation. His second hat-trick for Andrew Cole. We've played 66 minutes. Newcastle have got a seven. Newcastle United Division One champions 1992-93. The season's record. They played 46 games at home. They won 16. They drew six. They lost just the one against Grimsby Town. They scored a sensational 58 goals. They conceded just 15. Away from home, 13 wins. Another season's record. Three draws. Seven defeats. 34 goals for and 23 goals against. It left them with 96 points, eight points clear of Billy Bond's West Ham United. The manager and the players were loving every moment. Had tremendous support from upstairs, brought some very, very good players. They already had some very good players here. They've now got confidence. Um, Newcastle's a club of the future. The past's gone, we've done nothing about it. The future's good. That would be brilliant, you know, I've come here to score goals. And that's exactly what I've done. I'd like to thank them in a big way. I'm privileged. It's an honour for me. Brian Kilkline to me and steer this club. And it's been an honour for me to come this side today. I've enjoyed every minute this year. I'm proud to be a Newcastle player. Barry Venison, Andrew Cole and Kevin Keegan. Just three celebrating on the field after the most famous of victories against Leicester City. But what a squad it had been throughout the duration of the season. From August the 15th through to May the 9th. The goalkeeping duties shared by Tommy Wright and Pavel Cernacek. The fullbacks Barry Venison and John Beresford, virtual ever-presence, but spare a thought for Mark Stimson, Ray Ranson, young Matty Appleby, all filled in on occasions. The two centre-backs, again the positions dominated by two players, Kevin Scott and Stephen Howey. Again, no spare a thought for Brian Kilkline, the club captain and the man who lifted the First Division trophy. In midfield, the number four shirt, again dominated by two players. This time, Liam O'Brien, the rejuvenated Republic of Ireland international, and Paul Bracewell, who signed from Sunderland in in the summer and really did enjoy a quite spectacular end to the season. In midfield alongside them, the likes of Robert Lee who came from Charlton to dominate the number seven shirt as Franz Carr went to Sheffield United. The number eight shirt likewise bore two names, Gavin Peacock in the vast majority of the season
season. And then Andrew Cole signed for one and three quarter million. Alongside him up front, David Kelly missed just one league game against Grimsby. And the remainder of the midfield, wearing number 10, Lee Clark, the player's player of the year, the only ever present in the league. And then in the number 11 shirt, Republic of Ireland international Kevin Sheedy, eventually giving way to Scott Sellers at the end of the season. For the subs, the 12s and the 14s, war by the likes of Kevin Brock, Peter Garland, Mickey Quinn, and of course the likes of Alan Nielsen. The squad certainly holding its own throughout the season, and a squad which will be applauded and remembered by Newcastle fans through the ages. It's got to be one of the best, without a doubt. I can't, off the top of my head, think of a better game than that today to top off an absolutely fantastic season. To me, it was it was just a celebration, you know, and, and the lads went and done on a park forward. Unbelievable, you know. It's I can't believe nothing like it in my life. I've not seen nothing. Last time I seen something like that was when my child was born. I've not seen nothing like it before. I thought the atmosphere was absolutely electric. Everybody was on top of the world. It was wonderful. So many years of in the doldrums and now it's called a couple of fruition. It's absolutely fantastic. In the 50s, yes, you know, I mean, we were great. But this is the best Newcastle team I've seen since then. They're absolutely fantastic. For players and for fans alike, a quite sensational season. But for one man in particular, he said at the start that he'd come back for only one job. He came back to manage Newcastle United. And in the space of 16 months, he's guided them to the Premier Division. I mean, that team that, that went out there today will grace the Premier League. Make no mistake about that. If something better comes along in terms of a player who will give us an extra dimension or something we haven't got uh, at the club at the moment, of course we're going to look at it. Everybody knows that, the whole world knows that. But uh, there's no big dismantling job to do here now. We, we actually bought before the deadline and strengthened where maybe we could have got away with the players we had. But you've seen what that's done. You've seen Andy Cole now. I mean, he's just gone ahead of games, uh, goals for games today. You've seen what... Uh, how Lee Clark's bounced off him, and, and David Kelly, and Scott Sellers has done a terrific job coming in half fit, really, because he'd only played a few games. And then Mark Robinson, I was able to introduce today. I, I'm so excited about him as a player, uh, but we've still got the Steve Watsons, we've still got the Alan Thompsons, we've still got a lot of talent at the club that is waiting to come in. And, and when they come in, I think they'll be better prepared to do the job. You've always said as well that there's, there's no substitute for being a player, on a personal basis, finally. How does that compare in terms of satisfaction? and in terms of, you know, levels of emotion. Well, my satisfaction really today has been for the Newcastle public to look at the faces, to look at the smiles, to see the way they received the team. Um, I think I said again a year and a half ago, or a year and four months ago, whatever it was, I said, I want very quickly for the people in the town to start talking about the players at the football club, not the manager. Someone said 30,000 people turned up to see the manager against Bristol City. Next year, 38,000 people are going to turn up to see Andy Cole, Lee Clark, Scott Sellers, and you know all the other players, Robert Lee, you can, you can go on. They're going to turn up to see them. That's when you know you've got a club going in the right direction. A manager, yeah, he can help, but the players are the ones, and uh, we've got them here. And if we don't feel we've got the right ones, we'll go and get them. Does the level of adulation, though, ever frighten you? Well, I, I think when people put so much faith in you, you, the only thing you've got to be concerned about is, is, is trying to justify their faith. Um, we'll make mistakes, uh, we'll have bad days, but at the end of the day, given that little bit of luck which everybody needs, they know that I only want the same as they want. I want to be part of a very, very successful Newcastle United side, and uh, that's my job, and that's their dream to have that. And uh, I think we're on our way to fulfilling the dreams. Um, that's a terrific football team we've got out there. The fact we've only done it in the first division uh, means that people always doubt it. But we've got a chance next year now, haven't we? The lads have earned the right. The manager, as he has all season, meanwhile, will need the backing of the chairman, Sir John Hall, in the Premier League. The reluctant hero in many ways, looking to widen the transfer boundaries and looking to take chairmanship into the 21st century. I think there should be more, basically, uh, ever coming and, and going. I think that, yeah, I would accept a quota on the number of foreign players you can play on your team. Uh, I don't want to see the I want to see the English game improved, but I, I I don't want to see what's on the table now. And I'm, I'm sitting down here, and I've just it's just come before me, so I've got to sit down and think it through. But certainly, what was originally on the table, the original current procedures, I'm not against. As basically, it was it was quite wide and liberal. But the new ones are a total sort of you know handcuff uh, situation, which I'm not prepared to accept. And do you feel that they could just be the start of even tighter controls? Oh, you never know. You never know. Someone's been very very clever. And you've got to hand it to them. Uh, what they've done, uh, and uh, you know, but uh, there's an interesting scenario that there's a lot of a number of 
people such as myself have put a lot of money into the game. Jack Walker and Blackburn and Alan Sugar at Tottenham, whatever the media might say about him, and Pickering at Derby and the owner of Cardiff and, uh, and the, uh, Sullivan, the owner of Birmingham, and uh, we're businessmen coming in. We've come in because if we hadn't, the clubs would have gone to the wall. So we're businessmen with a lot of cash in the game, and we want to say in the running of our businesses, because that's what it is at the end of the day, a business. And uh, this is restrictions on the running of my business. A business may be, but still the sport that dreams are made of. For 20-year-old Lee Clark, Newcastle United has been a lifeblood. The dream to play for the Magpies at senior level fulfilled, and now the realisation of a championship medal. Whatever happens in my career now, um, in years to come, uh, you know, I don't think it'll be any ever more special than that because it was uh, just the best moment in my career that last from the Grimsby victory onwards all the way through to the celebrations on the Monday night was uh, something which I'll see if I'm not, you know, I've got mementos and things like that which I'll keep and, uh, you know, take pride of place in my home. We talked about the long, hard summer for you. It was a long, hard season as well with playing in, in every game. Yeah, it was a it was a long season. It was uh, and a very enjoyable season, um, and uh, we're riding on a crest of a wave. We're very successful, so you did, you wanted to be part of it, and you wanted to go out in front of thirty thousand uh, juries each week and uh, give them give them your best shot and uh, give them what uh, success they've been starved of over the last few years. You know, a lot of teams that will come to St James's Park will be frightened by the atmosphere here. There's no doubt about that. Oh yeah, we're. This, this club and these fans can only be the good for the good of the Premier League. Um, the team can go out and grace, grace the Premier League. Uh, I've watched a lot of games on television and uh, I think we could be one of the outstanding football sides in the division. Uh, the crowd is just going to boost their uh, attendances with every game. So uh, this, this club is where it deserves to be. The glory days could be back. I hope so. Um, I'd love to be part of it. I've... Uh, you know, you have a bit of success and people go on about uh, are you going to be the next one to leave and are you are you going to, you know, join this bandwagon and go to the, the bright lights in London and things like this, but uh, I'm quite prepared to spend uh, the bulk of me, uh, well, all of me British career at Newcastle United. Newcastle United and the manager had finished the season in style. The Premier League and Liverpool, Everton, Manchester United and Arsenal beckons as Clark, Hall and Keegan look forward to life in the top flight. Twelve months earlier, Jack had helped Blackburn climb the beanstalk. In May 93, the giant had awoken. I hope next season it's the same. I'm collecting individual awards, but I'm also picking up a Premier League Championship medal. The debt's still there. It hasn't gone away. We've bought players but there's still a long way to go. You know, on a rough estimate, we need to find about £20 million if we're going to finish the ground and we're going to find money for Kevin to buy players. I think I said at that press conference 16 months ago, it's got to be like a snowball going down a hill. Well, this snowball's picked up an awful lot of snow this season and it's hurling along and uh, it'll take something really drastic to stop it and I don't think that'll happen. And Brian Kilcline, who lifted the FA Cup at Wembley in 1987, now lifts the most famous trophy the most famous championship trophy in English football, the 103-year-old First Division trophy. It goes from Kilcline to Venison to David Kelly, who kisses it to Lee Clark. He'll struggle to get it off Lee Clark. Eventually passes it to Pavel Cernacek as a thousand black and white balloons are released. And St. John Howie, surely the most improved member of this squad, to Robert Lee, an inspired signing in October from Charlton Athletic. Another one of the signings, Mark Robinson. This is Freddie Fletcher, Chief Executive of Newcastle United. Can I take this opportunity to thank all the sponsors who have given us such tremendous support during this championship season? with a special word of thanks to Scottish and Newcastle breweries. The million pounds provided in the past not only helped to keep this club on its feet, but also provided the platform for the success we have enjoyed on and off the pitch this season. On behalf of the chairman board, Kevin and the players, I once again thank the breweries for the support and hope that the relations will not only continue, but go to reap greater rewards for both in the future.